It's uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, and I'm going to Skiji. Skiji is the largest fish market in the world. And I'm going to go there and talk about the fish and the challenges and the problems and to put into context what we're doing to this planet. Because when you see this, you're going to get it. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I already have workers here. These guys are workers right here who are headed to the market. So I'm going to follow these guys, and they're going to take me. Now, if you're going to go to the market, you got to go really early. Imagine every day getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go work and wait until you see what I'm about to show you. Here is a factory near the market, these little carts, and they're already working. This fish market never closes down. It's open 24-7. It's like a monster devouring, devouring our oceans. And you got to consider this, that there are markets not as big as this, but markets just like this all over the world. The market's so big that they have their own security. This is, this is the fish market security. Police? Or security? What? Corner, turn right. Turn our corner right. S -s 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 this way and around? Right. And Next around, street. around? Next, Next street. street. This one, turn right? Uh, Next street. And go right. So he's telling me, I can't go here and left? Chigao? That way, that. All right. So he's telling me the right direction. It's very easy to get lost trying to get to this market. It's that big. And that's why it's important that you go early. When I say early, I mean 2 a.m. in the morning. I'm going to run a little bit because I don't want to be late. You don't want to be late for the check-in. They only let a hundred people in, so we got to go. And here is the major entrance. Right here in front of me is the main entrance into this massive market. Another look of the market right here. It says, to visitors. All right. This market is crowded with trucks and special vehicles. All right, the floors of this market are very slippery. Please be very careful. All right, so this is danger. I'm gonna have to go into chaos here with trucks flying around me. You gotta pay attention and everything else. And here is the checking gate right here. I'm the first guy. That's how serious I am, the first guy. So look at these bikes just coming in here, these cars, all these workers now are coming in and all the trucks are already here. So this is the check-in point right here. You see the sign, there's very little English, it's hard to tell, but this is it. It tells you what you can't do here. Little thing to prevent the spread of influenza, please refrain from visiting the market when you're in physical condition. So if you've got a cold, if you're sick, do not come to this market. Do not make other people sick. Okay, people who have been drinking are not allowed to enter this facility. Registration time from 5 a.m. If there's too many people waiting in line, registration may start before 5 a.m. You want to be here at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I'm here really easy. So, other things here. Here's other, other things that you're going to see here. Some numbers. That's on the out. You can figure that out. That's for the Japanese. You can see their numbers. Um, there's an email for anyone interested. It's kind of backwards. All right, here's a for all media, please get permission when you take pictures in the Tsukiji market. I'm not media, I'm just a guy showing up. So what else do we have here? A little samurai. Now here's a good thing, here's a map of the market. Now right here, these are. this is where I believe where the auction is going to take place. And it's, look how big it is. It's like an entire city block. It's that big. And they've got little handouts here. So you can come here and grab yourself a handout. All right? Maybe a little more light here. Probably got some wind on my camera. I apologize. So I'm here. Come here. This is the camera right here. I'm here with. Yo vivo en España por siete años en Palma de Mallorca. España es mi amor. España chiquita suave. Mamita la mamita. See, this is what I love about Tokyo. You show up first, and I apologize. I said, sorry guys, you can't be number one today. Because wherever I do something, I always try to be number one. But what's really amazing, it's three Spaniards that are number two. Oh, so, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so, so basically, 
um, I was telling them that uh, I'm doing a, a little film here, kind of exploiting what's going on because we've got to understand the size of the problem. We have a we have a finite number of fish. We have a finite ocean. Yeah. And we, you, when you see what is going on here, you have to imagine this is happening in Hong Kong, it's happening in New York, it's happening in London, it's happening in Barcelona, it's in happening Canada, in Iceland. It's, it's happening all Canada. over the world. And ultimately, if we don't wake up, if we don't slow down, if we don't stop, we're going to get to a point where we have no more fish to eat. It's going to go from, we have sushi, do we have no sushi? And that's gonna suck. And how do we do that? Well, we can do that in a number of ways, but I'll talk about that later. But let's pause this and we're gonna wait and we're gonna go in there, okay? Okay, so we have our bronze medal. Bronze. Hi. He's from German, I'm half German. Meine Mutter ist Deutsch. This big time the only sentence you know. It's the only <laughs> sentence I know. I know more Spanish than I do German, okay? And I know a lot more. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, so tell us your story. This is your second time That's coming. my second time. Uh -huh. I came here two days ago yep. at 4.30 and that was too late. It was so too late. Today I'm here at 2.30. That's right. Uh, There's already people here. Yes. Who's yeah. number one? Um, I don't know. He looks like that. That's right. Let's go. Alright. And I got some crazy Spaniards, which is awesome. We're going to have an awesome time. <laughs> right. So, basically, you all know I'm passionate for bees. Well, yes. these guys, tell us what you do. Uh, we're firemen at the Canaries. In the Canaries? Yes. And how the bees connect to what you're doing? Uh, right now we have a really good problem about the orange. Right. Yeah. So you have oranges in the Canary Islands? Yeah. The really good ones. Yep. Uh, with the honey too. Right. The last two or three years was right. in a really good production. Right. It was like broken the connection between the bees and the Right. New generation of orange. Right, because the bees pollinate. And exactly. that's what people don't get. That's so the it. thing is, here's the thing that people don't get, all right? We will have oranges in the future. The thing is, there will be $10 an orange. Who can afford $10 an orange? They will have to have, they will, they will come up with chemical sprays, right, to, to pollinate. It's gonna be very expensive, only the rich people. So the, 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 the ordinary people are going to be denied the ability to have bananas, to have oranges, to have apples. I mean, look at the fruit in Japan. Do you know that the fruit in Japan has been this high for 30 years? The price of fruit has not been going up. It's always been super high. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what's happened in Japan is also going to happen around the world. And we're already seeing it, all right? We're seeing the prices. In the last 10 years, yeah. tell us what the prices have gone. It's coming up all the time. All the time. Would you say it's doubled since? since? Maybe more. Yeah, maybe yeah. more. Milk is doubled. All these things are doubled. And the quality is going down. And the quality is going down. And that's because what we have is called industrial um, production. This is industrial production. Yeah. And basically industrial production is all about basically maximizing profits and lowering costs. And when you lower costs by maximizing production, then you've got to give up something and that something is quality. And you know, and that's, and, and as the world's populations grow, as demand grows, everything goes down. And we'll see that, so stay with us. So the uh, big boss just arrived. He looks hungover. It looks like he's been drinking shochu and, and sake all night. He kind of walked up like, oh, I'm kind of dizzy. And this is, it's 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. There's the Spanish guys. We've got the German guys. Who's next? What are you? Where are you from? American. Yeah, American's number one. Don't worry about it. I'm already representing. Okay, who else? Who else do we have here? Where are you from? California. California, more Americans. Texas. More Americans. More Americans. Where are you from? Russians in the back. Yeah. Yeah, you lost the Cold War, but that's okay. All right, what else? And you have where are you from? I'm American. I'm, a, I'm actually an expat. Oh. I am very embarrassed to say I'm American. Let's just put that. I fled America in 2004. I told all my fucking friends the system's going to collapse. Get the fuck out. They laughed at me. I was the guy who started the blog, The Fall and Decline of the American Empire and now someone else fucking copied it and made lots of money off it. But I don't have any followers, but you know, I saw it, I got the fuck out, and I'm happy here in Japan, and I'm doing a documentary special on the decline of bees 
for Animal Planet. I'm the next Steve Irwin. I, I'm doing a documentary on the giant killer hornets. You can't tweet this shit. I'm serious. Do not fucking tweet this shit. They're, I've been tweeting this shit, and I'm in a lot of fucking shit right now. But the good news is, they didn't put it in my contract in NDA, right? And they fucked up the whole production thing. They hired me for shit because they're like, they couldn't get a SAG actor from California to come over here. And I fought these ma- Do you know what these giant hornets look like? I wish I'd have brought my queen, but they're about this big. They will kill you. And on my first day, I was with the naked, a very famous bee hunter in Japan called the Naked Hunter. You know why he's called naked? Is because your clothes is like naked to these. They have a seven millimeter stinger. For you Americans who don't understand millimeters, okay? Because we're asinine and we're still teaching a stupid standard system. Seven millimeters is about one fifth of a centimeter, okay? Your clothes is like you're naked. Now, I want you to understand, I was in the middle of a swarm with a 78-year-old man, all right? He's armed with fucking pesticide in both hands. I took a squash or a, a badminton racket and pesticide. I'm a tennis player. I said, give me a racket. And I'm there just fighting and flailing these things. Everyone else is in this heavy-duty gear. This is, it's called Monster Week. It's airing in April. You're going to see a week of me. And I'm telling you, I'm the next Steve Irwin, but my focus isn't on talking about fucking crocodiles, not talking about the fucking all oh, this and that. My focus is talking about how we're fucking up this planet, how shit like this, I'm making a video today like this is, how this right here, we've got thousands of these. We are raping our oceans. You know Earl? What's her name? What's her first name? Earl, Earl, Earl. She was the first one to wear the scuba deer, woman. She studied under, under, what's his name, who invented it? Who invented the scuba gear? The French guy. Come on, now you guys are dumb. Who? What? Doctor, huh? Huh? Thank you. The Russian gets the point. The, yeah. Um, what's his name again? Gustav. Gustav. Gustav? Gustav. Oh. Yeah, his pronunciation sucks. But He's French, not Russian. Huh? He's French. 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 He's right. No, I said the. I said the. The Russian gets the point. Yeah. Yeah. He's French. So anyway, so basically, I'm here doing a video, um, and hopefully, I got this job because I did a video on the crisis of bees. All right. He's been watching me talk all morning. So, so basically, so basically. I did a video and they hired me for shit to come over and risk my life. So I'm now continuing on. So he's counting. We get a hundred people in here. So you get a hundred in and it's three o'clock. All right. Thank you. So uh, you come in and they're going to give you a vest like this and you wear these vests and this is to protect you. They zip up and then they have you watch an infomercial. Oh, there is a trout. There's a little fish here. To learn about the fish, freshwater fish. On the... right, you gotta move up. So listen to your staff. So here we are. Well, most most people in here are actually American. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're having a picnic here, having a discussion, all of us sitting down. We still have like quite a bit, like three thirty, and an hour and a half before they're gonna let us in. And there's like sixty people in here. My companions are all sleeping here. I have put them to sleep with my drone of English about bees and everything else. Like a lullaby, I've, I've collapsed them. My, my American friends here have, have put up with my droning, my constant ceaseless sound. There is, yeah. It's only for one day. Exactly, it's only for one more hour. One more hour. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm hungry now.
<laughs> These are the Japanese fish. The larger fish. I wasn't naked over there. It was fun. Oh, good. Oh, we do a shower grab. It's okay. Yeah, they just opened the doors. Yeah, the young guy. All right, let's go. Hello. And uh, he's leading us out. So I'm gonna record this. Sorry for the bump. I don't have a steady cam. But, but here is the markets over here. What's your name? Namai Nandeska. Namai wa Nandeska. Oh. What name? Mm. Yeah. Shogo. Shogo. Yeah. So Shogo is our guide, <laughs> a young guy. He's gonna kick. All these, look at all these fish. He's the youngest guy. Security system. And they're going to be taking us to the auction area here. We're going to see the fish market auction. These little buses will run you over. The most dangerous thing when you're walking around are these guys right here. Backing up, like right here. They don't care. Cars here, there's cars everywhere. And um, right here, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's got a really danger. I'm a nine there. I'm a nine. Look at them all working in there. It's crazy. Trucks rushing in here. Look at all this plastic. Those are all the empty boxes they're putting in there for recycling, reusing all the plastics. They're separating it all out. The trucks, the amount of trucks and everything here is just insane. Come, come, Piano, is that you okay? Look at these guys. As you can see, I'm like leading the crowd here. I've got my little. Hey, keep right side friends, keep right side friends. Look at them just flying at us. Now we're going in here. I can smell, I can smell the tuna. Oh, and here's the auction. Here's the tuna auction right here. They have us in here. Wow. They have numbers on them. Okay. okay. So um, they're uh, doing the, the auction. Look at all the tuna here. Now these are infants. These are like young juveniles. These are not fully grown. And they're barely at the mating age. You can see how small they are. And the guy here is is noticing on that. These are small. These are like adolescents, like little kids out there. Yeah, move down. Down. Move da down. Down. Move down. Move down. There he is, they're there. So they're having a little auction here. He's the auctioneer. These guys are bidding. Hey, it's sold. I'll take this one. Yeah, he's gonna give us a slip of paper. Maybe, I don't know. He's writing down, he's the auctioneer right there. Write the note down. I think he's going to give it to someone or he's putting a notation on it. On there. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's. I think he's the auctioneer. This guy's checking. 
It won't let you do any flash, so you gotta turn your flash off. He's checking the meat, testing it there. Boom. Actually, he's got the thing on his hat. He's got the number on his hat. So this must be the... These are the smaller ones. And he's grabbing and testing. Yes. He's testing, the, feeling the oil. So, you have to understand that these fish right here are juveniles. They're not fully grown. But pretty soon, they're going to be so young that they're not even going to be reproducing. These are not full grown. These are probably like adolescents. Think of them like 10, 11 year olds, 11 year olds. Um, but they were humans. And they're so much smaller. You can see the size of them in there. And you got to imagine that this Maybe all around the world. Like raping our planet. And probably within, I don't know, 50 years, a market like this may even not be around. We can't replace these. It's pretty sad. Yeah, it's pretty sad indeed. Here are the crates. They probably came in from the fishing boats. They probably came in these crates. And you can see the size, 1100K, the brand on there for that. Bell rings. Auction. So they're about to auction. So I just learned something. The larger ones is the second team. And they're uh you want to see the larger fish auction, you got to come in the second team, not the first team. The, um, the auctioning now, the, uh, letting everyone know that the auction is going to happen. And, um, calling it in, I guess. But I already saw them auctioning. But, there they are. Ringing the bell. About to happen. Let's turn it around. There they are. These guys did it. These guys did it. Up, up, up. Okay.
bigger auction is on this side. And if you want to be on this bigger side, then you want to be in the green team, the second one. So that's a pretty amazing experience of them auction behind me. And look at the size of these here. These are the big boys here. This is the size you really want to be on. And the smaller fish are over there. This is probably the auctioneers over here. And um, they're testing them here. They're all of that. They're doing the, they cut the ends off, they test. These are going to be some expensive. See my, none? I wonder if I can find that man. So now I'm on. Really? I'm trying to get their attention. I wonder what they would go for. Hakman? See my Hakman yet? Hakman? Ni Hakman? Hakman? Ni Hakman? Hakman. Hakman. So it's uh, uh, like a million dollars, each of those, a million dollars. He said Hakman. So that's a hundred mon. A mon is 10,000. So a hundred, 10,000. These fish right here are a million dollars. Yeah, I just asked him. Oh, those are a million dollars. I just asked him. Hakman. 100 mon, each of those. Yeah. Yeah, I just asked him. Hakman, ni mon, Hakman. So that's pretty amazing. I wonder how much. So, it's pretty cool here. Uh, when the trucks are coming in, they're going to load them out now and get them out. They're going to sell them and move them. So the thing auction, we've finished. So if you're going to come to, if you're going to come to the fish market, you don't want to be too early. I would say come around 3, 3 a.m. Count 50. And you want to come in on, you want to be like number 51, number 52. So that way you're in on this side, you're on the exciting side. You're not seeing the small, small side. And it's the green. There's only two 50 teams, there's 50 of us in here that gets to see this. So when you come to Tokyo, you got to experience this. The guy hackling and rah, 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 and the guy going up and up and up. And, and this means like more and more and more. And this is okay, I got it. I got it. And, uh, but... These fish were, you know, this fish probably 10 years ago, 20 years ago, was probably, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 percent bigger. And um, these fish are getting smaller and smaller. We are overfishing. 95 percent of our large fish are now gone. So these, we are fishing these guys to extinction for our enjoyment. And that's a sad, sad day. They have the tails on here. It looks different. But, um... I don't know, probably the quality, the old, oh, it's a swordfish. It doesn't look more like a swordfish to you, just cut the, they cut the nose off. I think it's a swordfish. Yeah. And they fill the belly with ice. Doesn't it? Like a swordfish face? I can imagine the, the, they cut the tips off. So you're going to say, what are you going to say? This is a swordfish, right? Sword. I think so. Yeah. Chodai. 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 Give me sample. I want to try. <laughs> so as the bell rings, we're ushered out here. Our, our, our friendly guard is going to slowly move us out and uh, bring in the next group. So, He's been a good, a good helper here as we move through. And now I'm going to go and eat at a sushi restaurant, one of the best little sushi restaurants right here, and try some of this fish. So come along with me for that. So here we are, moving along. More, more, more fish. This, this machine never closes down. It's always working. Always. We're about to get hit. The sun's coming up, so now it's time for us get sushi. And hey, look at all the trucks here. 
Yeah, you guys. All these trucks are going all around Japan, every corner, taking them to restaurants, to markets, creating a mountain of styrofoam and waste. See all these empty things there. All these empty boxes are all going in the trash here, right? And this is created every day. Just a mess. Look at this. Look at this mess of styrofoam that's done. This is just one day. It's probably picked up every day. You just back it up to drop it off. This guy just carrying the styrofoam. Follow this guy. Look at this, it's amazing. Look at this. This is industrial production. Someone's, I wonder if we catch an accident. That guy got ran into Just moving him around. He is not looking around, he doesn't care. Who is this right here? Just insane, you just gotta watch where you're going. These guys are just, it's just chaos here. Moving us through. Here we go, they're asking us, ah, oh, so this is the exit gate. So a lot of people show up here thinking uh, this is where you go. And um, this is where you actually hand in your vests, right here, at this exit gate here. Not the entrance, it's the exit. I hope you enjoyed that. That was just crazy. The amount of the fish and the and the and the styrofoam and just the noise and the chaos and you know it's it's just unbelievable. And you gotta come and see it yourself. And I hope this video provides you with a little bit of a nuance of what it's like. Because you have to again remember, we are raping our planet of its fish. And as the taste of sushi develops and grows as it has, we, are, we have an exponential growth of this, of this harvesting, of this raping of our planet. And it's only gonna get worse. This is a dead industry. It's a walking dead industry. And pretty soon, all these guys with its with 20 years or 50 years are going to be out of work. Our oceans cannot sustain the abuse. We have lost 50% of our coral reefs that sustain 20% of the diversity. We have gone from one dead zone, and dead zones are basically, you have all these agrochemicals and stuff that, that's flowing into the oceans, and because of these agrochemicals and these nitrates and everything else, you have an explosion of bacteria, it sucks up the oxygen and it makes it basically impossible for the fish, their dead zones. And 30 years ago, um, Earl, I can't remember Earl's last name, she said there was only one on the planet. Now there's over 500 and growing. We have put enough plastic and styrofoam and bullshit into our oceans that now over 40% of it is covered in this plastic sludge. Of that, 30% ends up in our fish. The bottom line is, we have a planet that's sick. And it's sick because of our business model. We have a business model that is insane. We think the planet can take any sort of abuse. It can't. In the, 19, in the 1700s, we weren't aware of the limits to growth. We are now. But the thing is, our business model was created at a time when they didn't exist. That idea didn't exist. We live in a planet where a business model thinks it can be exponential growth. It's called compounded annual growth rate. Compounded annual growth rate is impossible on a finite planet, yet it is what is driving our business model. It is what's driving our business plans. It's what's driving investments, and it has to stop. Now, I have the solution. The solution is called FoundUps. Go to foundups.com and learn more. It's a new kind of business model. It's selfless. It doesn't focus on this this unsustainable crap. It focuses on instead one that puts the planet first. It puts the interest of the fish, the interest of the animals, the interest of others first, and not the interest of the selfish. 
So join me on foundups.com to usher in this revolution for us to make the change. Thank you. My name is Michael Trout, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.